Good evening, everybody. Um, seems a bit dark here this evening. I don't know what's going on with my things, my uh, light. But anyway, uh, welcome to uh, workshop number 12. Uh, we're going to be talking about abstract photography today, um, something which I enjoy taking photographs from time to time. Um, and I think you do too, uh, from the looks of some of the images we've been posted up. It's quite interesting, actually. We were talking about city and architecture photography last week. Um, and then obviously when you look at the images by Joel Chinchilla and Juliana and uh, Irene Kung, those, those sort of photographers, you can see where they're possibly thinking along the lines of uh, creating a form of uh, abstract view of those buildings. So it's, it's not surprising that some of the images which were posted up um, <clears throat> after last week's show, we get a sort of a, a, a view of images which are sort of abstract in their form. So first of all, as we always do, let's go and have a look at the uh, the Flickr site and uh, see what's been uh, loaded up. I'm, I'm absolutely uh, delighted with the images that have been loaded up for me to just mention and talk about. As I say, I'm not uh, going to critique them severely unless there's something which I can see which hopefully will help the photographer. But um, let's have a look. Um, here we can see the first image up is George Griffin. And George, you obviously were watching the uh, show last week, and thank you for posting this image up. And uh, a great title uh, to this one: it's "The Beast Unwinds." And yes, it's something out of a out of a sci-fi movie to me. This one, and uh, it really is a very nice image indeed. I can't fault it at all. You've had three favourites. Um, let's just go through the normal blurb here: f three point eight, twenty two millimeter at uh, 1 80th of a second ISO 800 and I think in actual fact you've done the right thing to show the silver uh, or the aluminium or the steel structure here you've used the mono uh, style of the image and I think that's really worked well um, no, lovely shot I really enjoyed looking at that one thanks for posting it George um, the next one um, is in actual fact of that uh, riverside uh, uh, lane that I mentioned to you uh, in London. This is the rill. Got the person, the uh, George has got really low here, um, showing the rill basically blurred out. That doesn't matter because the main interest is, of course, uh, Tower Bridge in the background with the with the pedestrians walking. Um, I, I'm just wondering whether possibly um, a longer exposure would have helped here with an ND filter. Um, to really uh, smooth that uh, that uh, reel out, but um, a nice shot again, George. Moving on, I've just posted a couple of my architecture shots. This is the what we term the turnip building, the mayor's office, where I I really have just saturated the colours um, <clears throat> to uh, to give it that uh, you know a little bit of a different look. Um, and I think this again, we're starting to see some abstract image uh, work here. I could have cropped quite in closely to the building and just worked on the windows, but this obviously was an architecture type image, so I needed and wanted to show the sky. <clears throat> Next image uh, is of the walkie-talkie building, as we call it. I don't even know what the real name of the building is. Because I think it's one place or something. Uh, one question was asked, is that the natural curve of the building? Yes, it is. Uh, it's nothing to do with lens distortion at all. That is the natural curve of the building. And uh, the person who uh, sent the email through to me, I think it was uh, Justin, Justin Smith. Uh, no, someone else asked me the question, but I sent a link back to show that it is in actual fact, a natural curve of the building. Uh, this is the building in London, of course, which uh, was responsible for melting a car roof. Um, next one, another image by Ats Hold. Thanks for posting this. Uh, at, I think it's Atsy. I'm going to say Atsy. I hope that's correct. A, lo a lovely uh, uh, straight up shot of an um, abstract, again, abstract looking image of the building. You've left some sky in here. Um, I would like to have seen some movement in the sky, but it looks to me as though it's been a very dull day. But you've worked perfectly well here. Again, using mono, I think it works really well for that. You've highlighted the highlights and you've darkened the shadows down as well. So it's a, it's a nice image. And look at this, 47 favourites. Uh, and you've had eight comments on it as well. So congratulations on that. Uh, well done. Another close image, Justin Smith. Smith sorry. Um, really now starting to look at architecture in an abstract form, an abstract way. And this is a, this is a bit of a favourite of mine. I love these, these angles, these diamond, these the, the diamond shapes that are being created. And then behind it, we've got the squares of the natural uh, windows <coughs> of this building. Um, 
is in Sydney, uh, as we know here. Two favourites. Should have had more than that, in my opinion. Let's look at the blurb. F8, 24 mil, 150th of a second at ISO 400. Uh, nice shot uh, there, Justin. I enjoyed looking at that one. Another straight-up shot, Justin, as uh, uploaded here of uh, some architectural work. My only comment here is the sky. I think it's it's either been uh, it, you got a very white patch here, and I don't know how you would change that. I'm wondering whether if you just crop it straight across the top and forget about the sky, um, because that to me that white area is it, it's it, it's bleached out. You, I don't think there's any detail in that at all. Um, you could try a a, um, a graduated uh, filter over it in in Lightroom maybe to darken it down just to tone it down a little, but I don't think there's any detail there, and I think it would just look like a grey mass. So personally, I would have just cropped that straight across the top and uh, gone for the abstract view of these uh, of the building here. Um, just my passing comment, quite honestly, Justin. I've hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. I'm going to the next one. At Z has uh, posted another one, very abstract type image, this one, as you can see. Um, it's windows reflecting windows, and uh, it really does work very well. Um, I am a, a lover of uh, of uh, vignettes in the corners, and I think it would probably have worked a little bit better if you've done that. But um, even though, again, mono image, it's worked well. Nine favourites as well, so congratulations on nine favourites. Um, George Griffin's posted up this one down at the Royal Naval College in uh, Greenwich. Uh, it's a very nice pic picturesque image. I think it's just slightly overexposed a little bit, George, to be honest with you. Right in the centre, those clouds are, clouds are very, very white. Um, I would look to try and sort of uh, tone those down a little bit. Uh, I think this image would also help with a vignette in the corners just to centralise yourself, viewers, looking into the image and not wanting to look off to the edges and to see what else is going on. Um, eight millimeter lens. This is obviously a fisheye lens, and it, obviously you can see that by the shape of these buildings, and, and you can create some beautiful image, imagery with, with fisheye lenses, especially using uh, when you're taking photographs of architecture and uh, city buildings, and you're looking to create abstracts. Uh, but for me, just this center area is, uh, is a little bit too bright, I think it needs to be toned down a little bit. It's a little bit overexposed, and I would have just darkened down the corners again, just bring that vignette. So we're concentrating on the center, but the center is too bright, so you've got a bit of work to do there. But uh, thanks for posting that up, George. Next image again, George has posted using the 8mm interior of a church. Beautiful shot. Nothing wrong with this at all, apart from these windows top left and right. I think if you drop the highlights in your Lightroom, um, slider. I think you'll get some detail out of these, um, and I think that would help greatly. Uh, again, a vignette would help, I think, because the main interest is the altar here and the people in the centre and uh, Royal Naval College. You've got one favourite. Well done for that. But I think a little bit of uh, help with the uh, the light windows here by decreasing the highlight slider in Lightroom, I think, would in actual fact, probably help all these light areas coming through from these windows. I think you'll be surprised how much detail you can get out of that by using that slider. So that's the highlight slider in Lightroom. Just uh, reduce the highlights there. Next image, John Ilko. John, I'd really love to see this in colour, to be honest with you, but I can see why you did it in mono uh, in saying that. But I think uh, it reminded me of an image which I saw uh, by William Eggleston. Um, it's that sort of style, um, and I think it would have looked really interesting if I'd seen it in colour. If you get a chance to post it in colour, I'd certainly like to see it. Um, it depends how strong this bush is in the front. If it's a really strong green colour, then perhaps you've chosen the right way to go on the mono. But uh, I do like the monotone, but I really would love to see this in colour as well because I want to know what colour this building is. If that building is yellow, I think that could go wow. But we'll wait and see. Hopefully uh, John will post it up. Thanks for posting it, John. 11 favourites, though. A lot of people like that style. So 
Oh, who am I to make comments? I don't know. I'm just making comments in your work. I really love looking at your work. John posted this one. I've seen this one before, John. Yeah, it's a real derelict type um, uh, image of uh, uh, a, a house for one of description <laughs> in um, in Florida and 131 favorites. I can't fault it at all. Uh, it's a nice record of uh, of the, of this uh, for sale on four acres. Yeah. I don't think I'll be bidding for that. Now we've got Christopher Warren uh, with some imagery, two images here he followed up with uh, with uh, sort of like um, nature stroke uh, photo floral photography. I really love the decrepit, the decayed view of this image. Um, there's a ladybird here. I think they should have been just highlighted a little bit more, but without going OTT on it. So it almost looks camouflaged in there. And I'd like to see that a little bit. But even so, I really love the colours, really lovely muted colours, good concentration in the centre, and I love the vignette. As you know, I'm a great lover of vignettes. Two favourites. I think you should get more favourites on that one, quite honestly, with Christopher. Snug as a bug. Quite right. It's a good title, but uh, highlight it. Let me see that a little bit more. I think it would help the viewer. I've hit the wrong button again. Go to uh, the next one, which Christopher posted, which is... Uh, if we must die, I, I'm assuming this is some form of an orchid. I'm not a great uh, um, floral expert by any stretch of the imagination. Lovely detail. A little bit muted here. Perhaps you could bring that out a little bit more. I think you've pr if probably overcooked the vignette a little bit. But even so, it's a lovely image. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to see that colour out there a little bit more. Six favourites, though. Well done for that. One of my images where I'm looking at the abstract for you for this particular uh, this particular show, this event. Um, this is a photograph, obviously, of umbrellas hanging over a lane at the back of um, Barrow Market. Um, I've done a little bit of work on it. The, the obviously this was all fairly sharp, so I've really just taken the uh, the um, um, the sharpness out of the lower third of the image to concentrate on this on this red uh, umbrella here. Um, I'm well, quite pleased with that. I've got five favourites. So, uh, yes, I'm pleased with that one. Next one was an image taken with my iPhone through one of the uh, apps which I've got of uh, one of the flowers in my garden here, getting in as close as I can. I think it was with the iPhone. Yes, it was with the iPhone. And um, this uh, uh, work here has been done purely in the app where I've just, uh, you know, um, uh, created it using one of the filters. Uh, but getting tight just to concentrate purely on the shape and form of this particular plant. Stephen's posted this, uh, posted uh, a, a good shot. Five favourites here, Stephen. Well done for that. Um, this is a follow-on. Obviously, we remember the last time he posted the, the um, bull ring uh, in Birmingham. I've only got one comment to make about this image. I would have liked to have seen this top of the pole separated from that building that's the only comment i would make you probably just if you've got a second image where you have moved slightly that would have nailed it but even so look at that 1060 views and five favorites but that's the only thing i would say i'd like to see a little bit of separation there Stephen, between the top of the pole and that building um that would have centralized it all for me um doesn't actually show oh yes it does um a spherical fish eye, eight millimeter, the Samyang uh, at f11. That's quite a popular lens. That um, a lot of people buy that uh, lens to fit their cameras, and it's a, it does a, a very good job. Look at the sharpness in that image; it's beautiful. Just that little thing there, Stephen. I think if you separated the building from the top of the pole, Stephen then sent me another sent another one in with regards to the lake with the swan. Um, I think this is quite comical actually because I think the swan knows he's king of the lake. He knows he's a protected species. And then there's the goose over here keeping him quiet in the shadows. I mean to say, I'm not going to venture in there just yet. A little bit of a story, the way I look at it. Um, some have com made a comment that would be nice to have seen the goose. Well, not for me. I think the goose is, is enough there. This is the concentration in the center. Nice vignette. Sun setting or rising, whichever way it's going to be. I think that looks like uh, it looks like it's rising. Uh, eight favourites, lovely shot, um, using the 8 mil fisheye again at F F11. And, uh, yeah, I really like that shot. It's lovely. And it's a, uh, I've got a story that I can read into this one. 
it, it may be right, it may be wrong, but that's my story for it. So uh, thank you, Stephen, for posting that one up. And John's posted up a, a, f a shot here of uh, our Mo um, doing the uh, doing some kind of a, a, a road run. Um, John, you, this is this is an interesting point here because if this had been blurred just a little bit more, in other words, a longer exposure, it would have worked. Or you go the other way where you've got to get him 100% sharp and stopped with a thousandth, two thousandths of a second. You can see where the camera has focused on the grill and the uh, the cone at the back here. So I'm assuming you focused to that point and waited for Mo Farah to run into your shot. Um, if you that's That's a good way of doing it, but you've got to make sure you've got the depth of field. That's the first thing. So F8 would f11 f8 would definitely have covered that but you've got to choose a higher shutter speed to stop him in this motion or you go totally the other end and you go 1 30th of a second or 1 15th of a second and you blur it and you make uh, make it a little bit more of a fine art image so it's one of these shots which is in in the middle as a good attempt but i think if you work on either faster shutter speed or lower shutter speed depending on the effect you want to create but you can see where the camera's focused on the grill there that's pin sharp that grill as i go in and you can see that mo's a little bit well he is he's out of focus but thanks for posting it john um uh because uh you you will only learn from comments made uh, like this and uh yeah either sharp faster shutter speed or a slower one to emphasize emphasize the movement you got him perfectly positioned by the way he's running into the image perfect position but what spoils it is the fact that Mo's out of focus. Another shot by John um, of the uh, graffiti artists. I would have cropped that off the left-hand side there completely. There's no detail in those unless you can get some information out of it in your in Lightroom. But I would have cropped that straight off there and concentrated on the single artist with this work on the right-hand side. Um, And probably just saturated the colors a little bit more just to give it a little the the, uh, the the background a little bit more vibrance so those are the ones that have been posted thank you very much for doing that for for the group because it helps everyone else um, in the group to uh, to see these images being posted up so this week we're going to talk about um, abstracts now as I said to you at the beginning, that the, the uh, photography of city architecture and the like does lend itself to abstract photography. And um, I thought what I'd do, first of all, is in actual fact find out exactly, according to the dictionary, what abstract photography is. So we can uh, read this together because I'm going to go straight to the screen share again and, and bring, the, uh, bring the page up. And um, you can see... And it says here, abstract photography, sometimes called non-objective, experimental, conceptual or concrete photography, is a means of depicting a visual image that does not have an immediate association with the object world. And that has been created through the use of photographic equipment, processes or materials. That to me says I'm getting in close. We're not talking macro photography here. We're talking getting in close and creating patterns. And you'll see from the images which I've uh, dug out um, of uh, my images and some of the others on 500px and uh, and on Google, um, you'll see some of the images which uh, really show patterned work from uh, from an image. Here's one which I took of uh, the canal in Amsterdam, and beautiful colours reflecting off the late afternoon uh, sun uh, just before it was setting behind the buildings, and I've emphasised the colour of the effectively this is oil on top of the canals uh of the uh, canal water so we've got the blue of the canal and then we've got this oily yellow orange amber type colors that create a pattern i must be honest it looks like a map of greece at first but uh in terms of excuse the pun uh of the uh, of the land there but you can see it's it's an abstract shot and it's looking to create a pattern here's another one which i took quite a while ago of a of a building in pisa and uh, you can see here that they've effectively feathered in 
large brickwork into old brickwork. Uh, so I'm getting an abstract shot and creating a pattern. Now, some people have suggested this should be around the other way, but because uh, of the direction that I took the photograph, it, when it's switched around the other way, because it's a more solid color on the left-hand side, um, it looks as though I'm, the, the brickwork is going down, is, is sort of not level. This angle, though, it was a deliberate on my part to go smooth to rough uh, with the smooth brickwork into the rough uh, stonework of the other of the older bricks. So uh, that was uh, well, that's my excuse anyway. This one you've seen before is that obelisk again in um, La Défense, a straight abstract shot using the ribbons of this obelisk to uh, to emphasize the color, the pattern. And as I said, it disappears into into the sky. This was taken in Bilbao as a bridge which goes over quite a steep valley, just the other side of the the uh, fantastic museum there. And um, I like the the emphasis of the uh, in inside of the um, uh, bridge towers of the black and white stripes, backed off with the red. It was such a dull day when we went there. Um, that I, I just left the grayed out area of the skyline and the sky behind. <clears throat> Looking straight down on an industrial staircase, giving the abstract look of color and pattern. I'm very fortunate to work up at uh, Biggin Hill Airport and I get a chance to look in, in, in some of the aircraft quite close. And this was taken of one of the uh, <clears throat> private jet engines, again, creating that abstract look of the of the fins and the, and the jet engine. I've notice I've offset it slightly. I haven't put the the uh, the center of the engine right into the middle of my image. I've offset it to that magical third uh, line. And this one taken of London, um, building close to Billingsgate, uh, old Billingsgate market, that is uh, on, on Lower Thames Street, um, getting in close and picking the lines and allowing the building obviously to reflect, reflect the afternoon sunlight uh, that day. This one taken in uh, Frankfurt of the Galleria, the main shopping arcade there. This has been taken quite a lot of times. You can see here, uh, this is on Pinterest I'm using. You can see how many other people have taken this uh, particular um, building. Uh, all of them, majority of them wanting to show the light through this tunnel effect. Um, I decided to go in the image. I went the other way and saturated the colors uh, to emphasize the pattern uh, that the windows were creating. And finally, one that I took just this weekend, this is at... Um, the uh, shopping center opposite St Paul's Cathedral where you will go up to the Madison uh, bar where you can overlook uh, St Paul's Cathedral in the southern part of London and um, this to me was just a tangle of uh, a tangled web of architecture of glass of framework and uh, I've just saturated the colors a little bit to emphasize that I think that was the last one in that group yes it was so we'll come out of that so if you go into 500 px you again see some very interesting work where people have taken buildings and and other items and put the abstract view in it this one is called mirror building simply called crossed that's not quite abstract in my opinion some of the guys that load these images up on uh, on 500px don't select the the categories uh, properly. A ball ring. We've seen this one before. Um, different idea here. It is abstract in its form, created by the the ball ring itself. But uh, this uh, photographer has decided Thomas James is bringing in the sky and everything. Uh, it's a shame he's got his logo all over that, but that's his preference. I can't knock that. Uh, Joe Francis uh, looking straight up buildings and art and abstract shots are very very popular to do um and plants uh, as well i suppose when you're looking to this is a beautiful shot here derek kind 
line in the sand beautiful line creating a pattern and light and shadow with one of the things which we've talked about a lot isn't it light and shadow to improve your photography that's a beautiful shot and well deserved 99 pulses and over four and a half thousand views beautiful shot and here we go we got uh, this is a classic uh, example of uh, uh, of abstract photography aperture 2013 it's called This, funnily enough, is the building behind that uh, bridge that I mentioned to you earlier on in, in Bilbao. It's a fantastic museum. I'm not going to even attempt to say this uh, photographer's name, but it's a lovely shot. Using the abstract with the light post and the lady walking down the steps. So a little bit of street, but mainly a bit of urban photography as well but mainly it's the abstract. Look at these lines. Beautiful. Nice shot. Yeah, why not? Abstracts of water, especially if it's just a little bit icy and you're looking down, you've got the reflections of the, of the trees in the, in the winter time. Beautiful shot. Looking up, staircases, balconies. Abstract Reading Pagoda in Pennsylvania. Classic example here. Not, not a single thing is in focus here. Traffic lights, car lights, haven't got a clue. But it creates such a beautiful abstract image. Beautiful abstract image. Slicing through, yeah, edging on the side of abstract. I would have cropped that green off there, to be quite honest with you, but the green rope. And then zoomed in CDs where they've made a kaleidoscope of colour and abstract. Bubbles on the water, bubble art. This, in actual fact, sums up the work which we looked at last week with Joel and Julia and Miles uh, McGarry and, and Iren Kung, the abstract view of this image, a little bit of light above there with the skies and the windows from the building, working perfectly on the light and the shadow again, an abstract of ice, an iceberg. Falling from outer space. oil droplets close in of an image of a plant it's almost macro photography this there's a little bit of a fine line between macro and abstract another abstract shot taken probably by moving the camera at the time of taking the image so let's uh that i hope you've enjoyed looking at those images um to give you an idea of just changing your view of photography and this in actual fact this is a type of photography which you never know you get some decent images you might be looking to put them up on your wall because uh, they do make some very interesting patterns uh and um you know the, the especially with the detail you get the detail right so let's talk about camera settings now there isn't really a great deal to worry about here in camera settings if you are a fair distance away you could still probably set your uh, your aperture to f4 or f5.6 one thing you've got to make sure of though is in in terms of the majority of uh, abstract images you want a fairly fast shutter speed because you want that sharpness of the edges especially if you're showing straight lines but in the last image which we showed where obviously the the photographer decided to move the image uh, across the uh, move the camera sorry over the image then obviously a slower shutter speed would work and really that's another aspect of uh, of abstract photography which you can do um, especially if you take tree trees and tree lined uh, lanes where you set yourself up put the camera to say 1 30th or 1 15th of a second and as you take the shot drop the camera down 
and you take the shot as you're moving the camera down leave the uh, aperture we'll say five 5.6 f4 5.6 of that nature you will then get streaks of green you'll get streaks of the of the trees uh uh tree trunks and that makes quite an interesting image as well for uh maybe you may want to put it up on your wall that, that sort of thing so really abstract photography is is fine art photography really in its term and in its form for photographers and uh, it does make for people wanting to put them on the walls so people don't always want pictures of buildings and and street photography of uh, individuals walking through the streets or cars or anything of that nature of course you can do abstract shots of cars of course but um with regards to this sort of photography which we just talked about uh, shown here especially with city photography and with and with probably taking some nature images uh, wildlife images of uh, of plants and that the flora images then i think the abstract shot is well worth considering to uh, to have a, a play with and see if you uh, if you do create some work so um, i'm hoping that was of interest to you this time abstract photography um it's a popular style of photography um and uh if you get the if you get the balance right between saturation and uh and uh, your uh, settings in your camera you could lead to creating some very nice shots indeed so that's uh, abstract photography i hope that's been of interest to you this week um the book it's a brand new book by joel chinchilla joel chinchilla uh, now lives in italy um has taken some still life photographs of literally pots and uh, vases in one setting and he's used a 10 by 8 plate camera to produce these uh, images um in a style of an artist um which is very interesting work when you look at it now this is not to everybody's cup of tea i would hasten to add but it is intriguing work and it is well worth a view if you get a chance to look at the book in uh in uh, in a shop maybe um it'd be worthwhile you looking at it and if you're like me you really like the style of the work then uh, you'll probably end up uh, parting with, uh, what, £25 to get this book. Uh, yes, he fell in love with the artist Giorgio Morandi, and uh, uh, that is the basis of the style of this work that he's created here. It's a fascinating work, lovely muted colours, using the same background in his studio of all his images. And, uh, yeah, I would reckon that's a good, uh, a good book to, for you to buy just to show it's a really quality, skillful, and it's not just taking the image, uh, it's getting the light right. And you'll see in here, shadow and the detail in the images, and they're all taken with a 10 by 8 <clears throat> plate camera. Fortunately enough, my one signed by the infamous Joel Myrowitz when I met him uh, a few weeks back. <clears throat> so that's uh, that book is called... Mirandi's Objects by Joel Myrowitz. Uh, I recommend it highly, as I do all my books, to be quite honest with you. But anyway, I'm glad. To, uh, uh, thank you for joining me, those that have live. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, we're going to have another workshop next week. I'll work on uh, a, a subject matter. Um, I hope uh, the subject matter of uh, abstract uh, photography has maybe uh, sort of brought you to life a little bit and think oh yeah i'll give that a try the next time i'm out and and look for the patterns in the buildings look for the patterns in brickwork in trees uh plants and um anything that catches your eye but turn the camera bring push the camera in close we're not looking at macro photography here but we're looking to get in relatively close so that we create that pattern which abstract photography uh needs to show thanks for watching uh, tomorrow evening, if you're around, I've got a live uh, interview with Caleb Ash. First started taking photography when he was on the set of Star Wars. Now, there's a story in itself. So I'm really looking forward to talking. He's a good friend of mine, Caleb. He's part of the Arcanum. And uh, so that would be good fun. So that's tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock. Hope you can join me live for that one. Uh, the, the link is on, the, uh, on Google+. Plus and uh i hope you can join me so uh, have a pleasant evening everybody i'm not a big fan of west ham or manchester united but all the best you guys hope that it's a great game and uh yeah i'm gonna go and watch it now all the best bye for now